Okay, today we are going to demonstrate you the stomach, its uh, anatomical parts and uh, the blood supply uh, and uh, uh, some uh, thing like lymph nodes as well. Uh, so this is the stomach, if we hold it in the anatomical position, this will be the anatomical position of the stomach, like this. This greater momentum will hang out downwards from the greater curvature. The stomach has got two orifices, in the first we will discuss the orifices, this is the gastroesophageal orifice this one this opening it is coming from esophagus and this is the gastroduodenal orifice this is the gastroduodenal orifice this one this is the gastroduodenal orifice so between the this is the greater curvature of the stomach this one and this is the lesser curvature of the stomach the lesser curvature of the stomach is forming the right border of the uh, stomach and the greater curvature of the stomach is forming the left border of the stomach. Then we must know the uh, angles uh, or card notches of the stomach. This is the gastroesophageal uh, junction and this is the starting point of the greater curvature. Between the starting point of the greater curvature and the gastroesophageal junction, this is a notch. This is known as the cardiac notch and in some books it is written as the angle of his. Similarly, in the lower part, there is also a notch. This one, this is a notch. This is uh, between the uh, uh, gastroduodenal and uh, the end point of the lesser curvature. This is the end point on the lesser curvature and this is the start of the gastroduodenal uh, orifice. So, between these two, there is the notch. This is known as the angularis incisura or it is also known as the pyloric notch. Now, uh, the, uh, 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 the segments or the parts of the stomach. For divi uh, dividing st stomachs into anatomical parts, we must draw two lines. Uh, one line is drawn from the greater uh, from the cardiac notch up to the greater curvature, and one line is drawn from the angularis incisura up to the greater curvature. So, if we draw a line from the cardiac uh, notch up to the greater curvature, this will go like this in a downward manner. Downward. It has a downward course. It is not straight. It is downward like this. And similarly, we draw a line from the uh, pyloric notch up to the greater curvature. This is like this. So, below this, above this line, above this line, this line that we have, we have drawn, the, the whole uh, part of the stomach is known as the cardiac part, cardiac part of the stomach. And below this line, the whole part is known as the pyloric part of the stomach. This is the cardiac part of the stomach above this line and this is the pyloric part of the stomach. The cardiac part of the stomach is also subdivided into two parts by this line that we have drawn earlier. The segment above this line is known as the fundus of the stomach. This is the fundus and the segment of the cardiac end below this line and above this line is known as the body of the stomach. This is the body of the stomach or also known as the gastrum. This is the body of the stomach. So, these are the important anatomical landmarks that one must know uh, uh, for uh, the uh, uh, knowing the parts of the stomach. Now, uh, I will show you this is a ligament that is attached here. This is the gastrosplenic ligament, cut part of the gastrosplenic ligament. And similarly, there is another ligament here. It is uh, the and one ligament here. It is the gastrophrenic ligament. This one, this is the gastrosplenic ligament. I think this is all the gastrosplenic ligament that has been cut out. This is the gastrosplenic ligament and this is the gastrophrenic ligament. This is the greater momentum. Now I will show you the blood supply of the stomach. You know the stomach. This is the posterior surface of the stomach. Okay, this is the posterior surface and uh, okay, I will tell you something about sphincters as well. Uh, one must know that uh, uh, during holding a stomach or uh, identifying the upper end and the lower end, students are often confused. They hold the stomach like this or they will hold the stomach like this. So they don't actually know which is the upper end and which is the lower end. It is very easy. You must uh, see the dilatation here. This is the lower part of the stomach and here is the dilatation. And in the upper part, you cannot notice any sort of dilatation. It is just an opening. Here is a dilatation. So the dilated part is the lower end. And this dilated part that is here, 
this is the very hard and this is the pyloric sphincter of the stomach if we will cut out the stomach and see it from interior this will be the pyloric sphincter and the pyloric sphincter is actually formed by the thickening of the smooth muscles in the walls of the stomach this is the pyloric sphincter in upper part there is no such uh, sphincter present you can see that there is no any sphincter uh, and uh, this is known as the anatomical sphincter so in the upper part there is no uh, thickening of the smooth muscles and no any anatomical sphincter and but in the upper part there is a physiological sphincter and uh, how the physiological sphincter is formed actually it is formed by the esophageal opening of the diaphragm you know this is the gastroesophageal junction it will be surrounded by the esophageal opening of the diaphragm so when the food will enter into the stomach the diaphragm will contract the diaphragm will contract the esophageal opening will contract and it will behave as a sphincter and it will prevent the backward flush of the food into the esophagus this will behave as a physiological sphincter in books it is not clearly really written what is a physiological sphincter and actually the physiological sphincter is nothing but it is actually a diaphragmatic opening uh, sorry the esophageal opening in the diaphragm so this is the these are the sphincters of the stomach now uh, the blood supply you can notice this is the lesser omentum of the uh, or which is uh, attached to the lesser curvature this is cut out in this so this is the lesser curvature from this you can notice a, a blood vessel entering into the lesser curvature this one this is the blood vessel which is entering into the lesser omentum this one this is the blood vessel this it is uh, the right uh, gastric artery this is the right gastric artery this is entering into the lesser curvature and it will go upward like this and it will anastomose with the left gastric artery which is not shown here because we have dissected the stomach and we have pulled it out so the left gastric artery is a branch of the celiac trunk and celiac trunk uh, as you know is attached with the cadaver that is, that is why we cannot show you here or we can only show you the right gastric artery it will anastomose with the left gastric artery and this anastomosis is known as the end to end anastomosis you can know this these arteries are coming out from uh, these uh, gastric arteries these are the this is the branch of this you know the gastric arteries this is coming out and it is supplying the body of the stomach this is the gastric branches of the uh, gastric arteries these are the gastric branches which are supplying the body of the stomach similarly in the lower end you can notice a blood vessel going into the greater omentum this is the greater omentum and this here here this is the blood vessel which is going into the greater omentum it is known as the right gastroepiploic artery this is a right gastric epiploic artery which is a branch of the gastroduodenal artery the gastroduodenal artery is a branch of the hip common hepatic artery i will show you the uh, blood uh, uh, supply of the stomach on the board as well uh, this is known as the gast right uh, uh, gastroepiploic artery it will enter into the greater omentum and it will run into the greater omentum and similar for the up, uh, lesser curvature it will anastomose with the left gastroepiploic artery which is a branch of the splenic artery uh, this is not shown here you know uh, we have dissected the stomach and the splenic artery is still attached with the cadaver so i cannot show you right here so i can only show you the uh, right uh, gastroepiploic artery you can uh, notice the uh, blood vessels which are uh, protruding out from this Uh, right uh, uh, gastroepiploic artery or the left gastroepiploic artery these are also the gastric branches which are supplying the body of the stomach in the uh, greater curvature this is the blood supply of the fundus the fundus of the stomach has got its separate blood supply it is supplied by the short gastric arteries uh, here like this this is uh, the small terminal branches of the splenic artery they are supplying the fundus of the stomach uh, they are very rough here they are not very clear because they are entering very deep into the stomach so we can uh, you cannot see it here clearly but you know these are the small blood vessels no notice them these are the small very small blood vessels these are supplying the fundus of the stomach and these are the branches of the splenic artery similar uh, for this uh, upper gastroesophageal junction it is also has got a separate blood supply it has is it is supplied by the left gastric artery which is a direct branch of the celiac trunk gastric left gastric will come down and it will anastomose with the right gastric okay so it is also supplying the gastroesophageal junction now a very uh, rare thing that comes out in during dissections are the lymph nodes that we no most often uh, neglect uh, this is the lymph node this green structure is the lymph node 
which is present in the greater omentum. It's a very small, very small. This is a lymph node, I would say. So, it is uh, 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 the subpyloric lymph node and it will drain the pylorus of the stomach. So, this is all about the blood supply of the stomach. Thank you.